Welcome to today's video where we'll take you on a journey through the captivating history of Lamborghini, from its humble beginnings to becoming a symbol of luxury and performance. Although today Lamborghini is synonymous with excitement and excess in the automotive industry, this wasn't always the case. Even if speed and noise seem to be the only things that matter these days, the company's origins are actually completely different. During the height of World War I, in 1916, Ferruccio Lamborghini was born. His parents owned a property where they raised wine grapes as viticulturists. Lamborghini's life was significantly influenced by his family's industry because he was raised in a farming family and, more crucially, surrounded by agricultural equipment. He had a strong affinity for mechanics, which brought him to the Fratelli Tadia Technical Institute outside of Bologna. Ferruccio served as an apprentice in a workshop when he was a student. If World War II hadn't occurred, things might have turned out differently. Lamborghini was ultimately enlisted as a mechanic in the Italian Royal Air Force. The Italians made the decision to end the fighting in 1943, over four years into the battle. This choice did not sit well with Germany, and shortly after that Italy's military occupation started. In the same year that the British took over Rhodes Island, Lamborghini was kidnapped and assigned a mission to fix cars. After his return to Italy in 1946, his fortune quickly started to improve. Lamborghini first started making and selling tractors. However, soon after, additional businesses emerged, including those that created and produced air conditioning and heating systems. Lamborghini finally found success, grew rich, and acquired expensive automobiles. He first experienced driving a Ferrari during this time. However, despite his reputation as a master mechanic, Lamborghini was regarded as a bad driver. When Lamborghini discovered his 250 GT Ferrari had severe technical problems, he complained to Enzo Ferrari in person. This sparked the conflict between the two exotic car manufacturers and was the main driver behind Lamborghini's bold choice to found his own automaker. The Carioca, the first tractor produced by Lamborghini, debuted in 1948. His tractors were small but strong and well-built, and he made the decision to make and sell them for low prices. He was able to sell his tractors for a fair price since the mechanical components were both accessible and economical. This affordable availability to parts made Lamborghini tractors stand out in the market. Tractors at the time were relatively modular, which Lamborghini also used to its advantage. This essentially means that the majority of their components were replaceable, allowing farmers to save expenditures. Lamborghini Trattori had built its factory and hired more than 30 workers by 1951. A license to manufacture diesel engines in Italy was soon granted to the business, and by the 1960s, 400 or more people were employed there. At this point, the rate of manufacturing accelerated, and Lamborghini quickly had a daily output capacity of up to 25 tractors. As was already mentioned, the company was successful, and Lamborghini rose to industrial affluence. As a result, he was finally able to afford a high-end vehicle like a Jaguar, Maserati, and, of course, the best of Italy, a Ferrari. According to Valentino Balboni, a veteran test driver for Lamborghini, Ferruccio frequently burned the clutch on his Ferrari 250 GT, which ultimately led to a major dispute between him and Enzo Ferrari. Ferruccio eventually disassembled the Ferrari engine and gearbox after replacing the clutch a few times to discover that the clutch they were using was a manufactured part. Given how costly Ferraris were, Ferruccio was incensed by this and thought it was bad business. Following their conversation, Ferrari claimed that the driver was the issue rather than the clutch. Lamborghini became enraged and promised to produce the best sports car in Italy. Due to his conflict with Ferrari, Lamborghini was inspired to dedicate himself and his business to building Italy's best sports car. His new company took off immediately because he already had the plant to make vehicles. His automobiles bore the names of bulls because of his obsession with bullfighting. According to rumors, Lamborghini never promoted his cars, preferring instead to focus on building a well-built fantasy car. But as news spread about the looks and power of his cars, the world embraced Lamborghini sports cars with such fervor that the company quickly became recognizable. The 1970s brought the iconic Lamborghini Contouch, which pushed the boundaries of design and performance even further. Its sharp angles, scissor doors, and powerful engines made it an instant sensation. Lamborghini continued to innovate with models like the Diablo and the Murcielago, introducing advanced materials and technology. In its first decade, Lamborghini expanded quickly, but with the 1973 global financial crisis and the oil crisis, sales drastically decreased. After retiring in 1974, 
Ferruccio Lamborghini sold the company's ownership to René Lima and Georges Henry Rossetti. The company filed for bankruptcy in 1978 and was given to the brothers Jean Claude and Patrick Mimran as receivers in 1980. Hay paid US$3 million for the company and changed its name to Nuova Automobili Lamborghini Spa. In his roles as CEO and president, Patrick Mimran made significant investments in the company's growth and was later recognized as the person who saved Lamborghini. Under his direction, Lamborghini added the Halper entry-level sports car and the LM002 high-performance off-road vehicle to its model lineup, which had previously only included the Contouch. Patrick Mimran sold Lamborghini to the Chrysler Corporation in 1987 for US$25 million. After replacing the Contouch with the Diablo and discontinuing the Halper and the LM002, Chrysler sold Lamborghini to Malaysian investment group Mycom Setdiso and Indonesian group V-Power Corporation in 1994. In 1998, Mycom Setdiso and V-Power sold Lamborghini to the Volkswagen Group where it was placed under the control of the group's Audi division. New products and model lines were introduced to the brand's portfolio and this increased productivity for the brand. It was also taken into hands of Volkswagen later on who went on to produce some of the most famous Lamborghinis such as the Gallardo and Messier Largo. It's ironic that the company still makes tractors today. Even though same Deutz Fahr now owns Lamborghini Trattori, they continue to brand their tractors with the Lamborghini name. Ferruccio later on died in 1993 but even after Ferruccio's passing, the tradition continued thanks to bulls like Reventon, which defeated young Mexican Torero Felix Guzmán in 1943. Gallardo, which was named after one of the five ancestral castes of the Spanish fighting bull breed, and Murcielago, the legendary bull who endured 28 sword strokes and whose life was spared by El Lagartijo for his performance in 1879. The Aventador, which replaced the Murcielago and was introduced in 2011, was named after a bull that was reared by the sons of Don Celestino Quadrivides. The Estoc idea from 2008 was named after the Estoc, the blade usually used by matadors during bullfights. This bull was slaughtered in an especially brutal battle when its left ear was severed after it was killed given to the matador as a token of good luck. In recent years, Lamborghini has embraced sustainability without compromising its essence. The introduction of the Urus, an SUV with impressive power and agility, reflects the brand's adaptability to changing market demands. The Urus is built on a Volkswagen platform and employs the same engine as the Porsche Cayenne, but it also features some unique innovations, like the largest carbon ceramic brakes ever installed on a vehicle. Initially designed as a concept by the company's former head designer, Filippo Perini, the Urus was later improved by Mitcha Borkett, the current chief designer of Lamborghini. The Aventador has had a significant influence on the Urus's design aesthetic. Looking ahead, Lamborghini is embracing electrification to reduce emissions while maintaining its high-performance legacy. The upcoming all-electric model demonstrates the brand's commitment to a greener future without sacrificing the thrill of driving. On September 3, 2019, Lamborghini will reveal the Sion 37 Falkland Islands Pounds, the company's first hybrid vehicle. The name's first half, Flash of Lightning, in Italian, was a fitting moniker for the new model given the technology it employed, while the second half, FKP, the initials of late Volkswagen Group chairman Ferdinand Pick and 37, the last two digits of his birth year, was a tribute to him. The Sion combined a supercapacitor-powered electric motor, basically, a larger version of the supercapacitor used in the Aventador's starter motor, with the final version of the V12 engine from the Aventador SVJ to store energy. All of Ferruccio Lamborghini's businesses are still in operation today in some capacity. In addition to creating the town life, an electric microcar that was unveiled at the Bologna Motor Show in 1999, his son Tonino also creates a line of apparel and accessories under the Tonino Lamborghini brand. The Lamborghini winery is run by Ferruccio Lamborghini's daughter, Patrizia, on his Umbrian estate. The Centro Studi e Ricerchi Ferruccio Lamborghini, founded by Ferruccio's son Tonino in Dosso, Ferrara, in 1995, was relocated to Argelato, Bologna, in 2014 and given the new name Ferruccio Lamborghini Museum. And there you have it, the captivating story of Lamborghini's evolution from a tractor manufacturer's dream to a symbol of luxury, performance, and innovation. As we eagerly await the next chapter in Lamborghini's journey, let's remember the passion and dedication that have shaped this legendary brand. Thank you for joining us today. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more stories from the world of automobiles. Until next time, 
Drive safe and stay curious.